world cannot add a single hour to our life or raise up for the earth a solitary grain of wheat for us. But God can and will give you everything abundantly according to your heart's desire. Anyone who despises this and tosses it to win is unworthy to hear a single word of God. More than enough has now been said to all of this of whom this commandment applies. In addition, it would all be well to preach to parents and on their nature of their responsibility, how they should treat those whom they have been appointed to rule. Although their responsibility is not explicitly presented in the Ten Commandments, it is certainly treated in detail in many other passages of Scripture. God even intended it to be included precisely in the commandments in which he speaks of father and mother. For he does not want scoundrels or tyrants in their office or authority, nor does he assign them this honor, that is, power and right to govern, so that they may receive homage. Instead, they should keep in mind that they owe obedience to God, and that above all, they should earnestly and faithfully discharge the duties of their office, not only to provide for the material support of their children, servants, and subjects, but especially to bring them up in the praise and honor of God. Therefore, do not imagine that the parental office is a matter of your pleasure and whim. It is a strict command and injunction of God who holds you accountable for it. But once again, the real trouble is that no one perceives or pays attention to, to this. Everyone acts as if God gave us children for our pleasure and amusement, gave us servants merely to put them in work like cows or donkeys, and give us subject to treat as we please, as if it were no concern of ours, but or ours that they learn or how they might live. No one is willing to see that this is a command of divine majesty who will solemnly call us to account and punish us for its neglect. Nor is it recognized how very necessary it is to devote serious attention to the young. For if we want capable and qualified people for both the civil and spiritual realms, we must um, spare no effort, time, and expense in teaching and educating our children to serve God in the world. We must not think of an amassing money and property for them. God can provide for them and make them rich without our help, as indeed he does daily. But he has given us children and entrusted to us precisely so that we might raise and govern them according to his will. Otherwise, God would have not no need of fathers and mothers. Therefore, let all people know that it is their chief duty at the risk of losing divine grace, first to bring up the children in fear and knowledge of God, and then, if they are so gifted, also to have them engage in formal study and learn so that they might be of service wherever they are needed. If this were done, God was also blessed richly and give us grace so that people might be trained and would be credited to the nation and its people. We would also have good, capable citizens, virtuous women who, as um, good managers of the household, would faithfully raise up children and servants. Think what deadly harm you do when you are negligent and fail to bring up children to be useful and godly. You bring up upon yourself sin and wrath, thus earning hell by the way you have reared your own children, no matter how holy and upright you may be otherwise. Because this commandment is neglected, God also terribly punishes the world. Hence, there is no longer any discipline, government, or peace. We all complain about the situation, but we fail to see that it is our own fault. We have unruly and disobedient subjects because of how we train them. This is enough to serve as a warning. A more extensive explanation will be awaited at another time. So, here ends our reading. That was a very long explanation of the fourth commandment, but I think it's important that we realize that we have, we have um, in four ways uh, to, to do this, we are to... Um, see in this commandment four fathers in this commandment fathers by blood fathers of household fathers of the nation and spiritual fathers and that we should respect and honor all of them above and that each um, father is also responsible for them to take their role seriously as fathers in order that they might be in subordination to god that they might be in submission to god so let's give thanks to god for fathers and mothers let us pray Dear Heavenly God, we thank you this day. We thank you for our fathers and our mothers, for the goodness that they have given to us. God, we just thank you. Uh, their roles have been given to you um, in order for you, us to, as fathers and mothers, to care for our children in such a way um, that um, as, as those who are fathers and mothers, those who are fathers of households, uh, those who are fathers and mothers um, in, in authority over us in the civil realm, um, and those who are who are um, spiritual fathers and mothers. God, we just pray that we might take these roles seriously, 
that we would always um, look to you for guidance, that you would guide us in what to do with our children. Um, and God, we just thank you. We thank you uh, for those who've taken on this role. We thank you that they might be a blessing to the world and that they might uh, um, acquire this blessing that God has given them, that they might have long life. And, uh, and that means um, that they might live in such a way that you might bless them in such a way that they might in, um, that they might receive those blessings that come with a long life, uh, even if it is a short life. Thank you, God, for all you've given us and all of you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining me today.